The next patient coming to our clinic is Joe, a 22-year-old lad from Uxbridge who's confident about most things, yeah. except his smile. I guess my teeth are the only thing that's kind of holding me back. Like they're so small and different to everyone else. I've learned to get over it. I'm 22 years old. I've got more important things in my life to worry about than people's comments, but they still do affect me. And when they say, what's wrong with you? And that's one thing I really don't like, is when people say, what's wrong with you? It's like, well, there's nothing wrong with me. This is how I am. For a long time, his mum didn't realise how much Joe's teeth were affecting his life. It was actually more to do with eating. Um, Joe had a very peculiar diet. He ate very bland food, didn't like meat, and it was ages before we realised that it was because of his teeth. <laughs> we could bite things off, but couldn't then chew it properly. Because it doesn't dig in very far anymore, because my teeth are so small. But, uh... Yeah. And because they're so small, I, I end up having, like, pushing my nose back and stuff. Yeah, kind of like that's right. Breaking the skin and stuff is difficult. Mm. When I used to eat apples, I'd sort of throw my head. <laughs> Do you remember? I don't know if you ever saw it. I'd sort yeah. of, like, <laughs> just to get in there. Oh, yeah, here, look. Oh, no. Joe's baby <laughs> teeth. Oh, it's one of those things that mothers always keep, is, uh, oh, is their kids' on. teeth. Look at this. God, they're tiny. Yeah, even when you had baby teeth. They were really tiny, um, well, eventually, especially, because they wore away to nothing. But the sad thing is that now your adult teeth look like most people's baby teeth, I think. Sort of um, yes, small and spaced apart, but you still look gorgeous. You have to say that. <laughs> Joe's desperate to fix his teeth, so he's coming to our clinic to see if Serpil can help. For this to be sorted would be a lot of relief for me. I even try and practice smiling in the mirror just so I know that I'm not looking stupid. How long have you been aware of the shrinking of your teeth? I've noticed for a couple of years, but I've never really thought of getting anything done about it. OK. I'm going to lie you back and have a little peep, and then we can see what the problems are, all right? Let's just have a little peep inside. Left and right cheek biting. The volume loss of tooth tissue is about... 40 to 50 per cent. Well, that's colossal amount of tooth surface loss and tooth wear for somebody of his age. Well, we've seen cases like that where nothing has been done and as the patient gets older, the wear continues and they end up with just having roots in their jawbone, just at the level of the gum and they've just got a gummy smile and no teeth. And we've seen that happen. Serpil's quick to diagnose Joe's problems. Try and get onto these front teeth for me. He's grinding his teeth away. And side to side, all the way over that way. Okay, brilliant. Over this way, all the way, and get the teeth to meet. So you're getting your mouth into all these positions when you're sleeping. Because when you bite together, bite together, they don't meet at the front. Joe's situation is close to my heart because I clench and grind my teeth at night as well. And I've caused a fair amount of damage to my own teeth as a result of that. Tooth grinding affects about 10% of the population. It's a stress relief mechanism and some people know that they grind their teeth at night and other people don't know that they grind their teeth. You're grinding your teeth such that you've got the teeth of, a, I would say, maybe a 65, 70-year-old. Great. Yeah. That's not good news because I say to everyone, because I grind, once a grinder, always a grinder. Yeah. And so it's going to be a combination of putting back what's been lost, but also putting into place prevention, and that yeah. is in the way of a mouth guard. Okay. And I think that you're almost going to be committed to wearing a mouth guard for the rest of your life. OK. All right? A mouth guard will help. But Serpil suspects that other factors may explain how Joe's teeth have become so damaged. What about fizzy drinks, that sort of thing? Yeah, I, What's um, your intake? So I would normally drink a fizzy drink once a day, one of the small bottles of Coke. Maybe once or twice a week I'll drink beer or um, vodka. With, what do you have with, with your the, vodka? With the, with, the, with the fizzy drink, actually, yeah. All these fizzy drinks may be exacerbating the effect of the nighttime tooth grinding. You can see like this, yeah? But it's not all bad news. What can be done is to actually put back what's been lost. And the way we do that is by literally building up the teeth, using tooth colour filling material to bond it 
back on the teeth. Joe will be back in a week's time for his treatment, but long term, if he wants to save his teeth, he's going to have to make some changes. Today's a big day for Joe. He's come back to our clinic at King's College Hospital in London to have his worn down teeth oh, rebuilt. So I'm going to be uh, <laughs> walking a bit taller, I think, when I come out. So. <laughs> a little bit more of the composite, please. Serple is adding a tooth coloured resin to restore Joe's teeth. OK, let's cure that. Blue light hardens it and sets it in place. Oh, wow. Can you see? That's how much you've ground away That's of your amazing. teeth. So what do you think about the length? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a much better length than they are now. And what about the colour match? Yeah, you can't even see where the joint is, so I don't think people notice that it's been yeah. adapted like this. A little bit on this one first. Nothing in life is permanent, but these have been shown to last up to about six years, and yours will chip more than somebody who doesn't grind their teeth. But if we make you a mouth guard, that's almost like an insurance policy mm -hmm. to help reduce the risk of that happening. Yeah. Building up the teeth isn't as easy as it looks. I mean, it does take, you know, lots of practice to actually get to that level. It is an artistic skill that most dentists have. OK, lovely. And after less than two hours in the chair... Are you ready to have a look? I think so. Yeah? I'm ready. OK. Oh, I don't want to... <laughs> <laughs> OK. Oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> that is so good. I never thought they'd look like this. You're an artist. <laughs> yeah. I'm be smiling all the way home now. Everyone's going to ask me what's so happening. Oh, that's good. That's good. It's amazing. They're, they're the things that we all take for granted. Exactly. I'm really happy with them. Great. Oh, it was great, wasn't it? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> You're welcome. Go <laughs> and there's someone else Joe needs to show. Are you ready to have a look at my teeth? Yeah, go on then. Let's have a look. Okay. <laughs> Show me. Oh wow. Oh, they seriously look amazing. Good, don't they? No, seriously, they do. Oh, 